Think I love you, John. No, I didn't. Let's suppose he does talk, eh? You can't exactly let him go, can you? Yeah, so? I could be there in like 20 minutes. You're not leaving, not like this. I'm trying to save your life, don't you understand? Get out the way. John, get out the oh. way. John, you're all right. Straight up through here. Right. It's up this way. Yeah, hang about. You are Derek Foley, security guard. Yeah? yeah, it's your body. Right. Jump in. right. God Almighty. Sierra Oscar from three four zero. The report of a body at the Bagford Road Industrial Estate confirmed that there is a body at this location. It's DS Bolton. Three four zero from seven nine. Are you sure about that? Affirmative, Sarge. Signs of violence. Right, secure the scene and wait for backup, will you? I'm going up to CID. I want Mr Brownlow, DCI Meadows and DI Deakin. Have it transferred upstairs, will you? It's the middle of the night, Don. Couldn't you phone? I need help, Maggie. Well, what have you done? Oh, it's bad, Maggie. I mean, I mean, it's the worst. I should kick you straight out of here, shouldn't I? Yeah, 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 you should. If you know what's good for you, you should. It's me. It's the middle of the bloody night and I'm going home. No. No, you... you did quite right to ring me. I'll, uh, I'll be there ASAP. I'll take him round to a mate of mine's. He's got an industrial incinerator. So, you gonna tell me about it? Do you think you really want to know? Well, I think I'd better. I mean, I'm on board now. Yeah, you could go, Maggie. I won't forget this, I promise. No, don't suppose I will either. So? So, I got into a fight. Guy was trying to kill me. Um, yeah, his hands were at my throat, look. Don! 
Well, how did you leave him? It was a fight. I mean, you are a policeman. It wasn't exactly police business I was on at the time. Oh. Look, Maggie, I need to ask something of you. And I know it's an awful lot to ask. So ask. Me an alibi. You mean lie for you? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I don't know what you're doing here. You've absolutely no reason to be here. I'm sure you'll find out all about. Back the Tell these officers what you told me, please. Um, well, <coughs> this is uh, one of the sites I check over on my patrol. I, I got here about. Um, was it a, Five past eleven. As, as I drove in, I, I, I caught a glimpse of the back of someone, like a bit, just legging it off the premises. Did we get a description? Mr. Foley thinks it was a bloke. That's about it. Oh, honey, caught a glimpse, like. It doesn't matter. Go on. Well, well, then I saw the the body. Howard, it's me. Yeah, I do know what time it is. Look, I'm at 21 Herrier Avenue, and I need you to get over here, like, right away, OK? Yeah, I am giving you orders. Cos I'm in the driving seat right now. My arse is on the barbecue, and I stuck it there for you. So get on your bike. Sir? There's no mistake, is there, Andrew? No, sir. It's John. So I'll take a look myself. It's over there, sir. Dead. Dead? Yeah. And I killed him. Oh, that's a bit extreme. Oh, tell me about it, Howard. Don. I didn't expect that level of service. No, no one expected it. It wasn't the idea, Howard. John Bolton was my mate. Yeah, right. Of course he was. Well, that's why I hope you could talk him round. Yeah, well, I couldn't talk him round, Howard. He didn't see it our way at all. In fact, he cut up rough. I was defending myself, Howard. That's the truth of it. Yeah, whatever you say, Donny, you were at the sharp end. Yeah, yeah, I was. So, uh, how were matters left? So matters were left with John Bolton lying in the middle of a cement works with his head bashed in, Howard. That's how matters were left. That aspect of things is unfortunate. Yeah. The whole sodding business is unfortunate, Howard, but that's how it is, all right? Still, what's done can't be undone. And from our point of view, it takes the pressure off. From your point of view, Howard, you've done very well out of this. So I reckon whatever I need to save my arse is totally down to you. I reckon I'm owed. I won't argue with that, Don. I'm making a personal commitment to taking good care of you.
Claire Stanton. Claire? Jack Meadows here. Look, I'm sorry about this, but I'm ringing around the whole firm. I've got some very bad news. John Bolton's body was found in the early hours of this morning. And it looks like murder. What? It's come as a terrible shock to us all, but I'm, I'm sure the one thing that John would have wanted was that we all pull together and do what we can to assist in the investigation. Who's, who did this? Well, there are no firm suspects as yet. Amipa are leading the inquiries. And of course, they'll be reviewing John's current caseload. In the meantime, I'm asking you all to come in early so you can be interviewed as potential witnesses. Sir. Good. Well, I knew I could rely on you, Claire. Jack, do you know Detective Superintendent Rogers? Uh, yeah, I do. Hello, Mum. Jack. This is D.S. Ferris. I know this is a difficult time for all of you at Sun Hill, and my team will do everything we can to respect your feelings. But this is a murder inquiry, and we have to move fast. We know that. Amit's um, spread a bit thin at the moment, so can I call on your troops for routine work if necessary? I'm sure they'll be keen to help. Now, I thought you might like to be brought up to date on... John's current inquiries. I certainly do, but can we clarify one thing first? I understand that D.S. Bolton was not, in fact, on duty at the time of his death. That's correct. So the assault which killed him could be unrelated to his police work? It could be. But? John was the sort of officer who wouldn't hesitate to pursue a line of inquiry in his own time. What, you mean D.S. Bolton didn't necessarily play by the rules? It's a real choke, isn't it? Yeah, you're right there, sir. You set it down. Has anybody spoken to the family? It would be an hand on it. There's procedures and all that. I suppose there'll be a whip round. Anyone on to that? Thanks for volunteering, Danny. Sarge. So this is the case that John Bolton was working on at the time of his death? Yeah. Rachel Booker was found in an alleyway. She'd been assaulted and been left in a coma from which she never recovered. And she worked as a lap dancer at the club of Howard Fallon. And she was also having a relationship with Howard's associate, Ray Bazzini. And these two have got form that goes way back. And at the moment, amongst other things, we suspect them of drug dealing. Another dancer at the club, Lynette, whose real name is Anne-Marie Olsen, said that Bazzini was responsible for the assault on Rachel. Now, she had money going through various bank accounts, way in excess of her earnings. That's even taken into account a bit of tomming on the side. The suspicion is that she was laundering Bazzini and Fallon's drug money. Now, Lillette was prepared to give evidence, and we had her in a safe house, but it was discovered. What, the location was leaked? We have to assume that. Lynette got away, but she went into hiding from us and the villains. John Bolton was the only officer she trusted, and he was the only person who knew how to contact her. So Barzini and Fallon have got to be in the frame. Who worked with uh, Bolton on the case? Quite a few officers, one way or another, but mainly Claire Stanton and Don Beach. Thing is, you've got to ask yourself what he was doing there. Well, it had to be an inquiry, hadn't it? You know what John Bolton was like when he got his teeth in it or something? Didn't it was a man with a snout, something like that? Well, that would be my guess. Well, we all bellyache about having our hands tied behind our back with rules and procedures and that, don't we? Times like this, you can see they make sense. What the hell are you talking about? Well, he shouldn't have been there on his own, should he? We all know it goes on. He's just asking for trouble. Who pulled your chain, Mickey? What? John Bolton was ten times the copper you'll ever be. He was also my best mate in this, Nick. I'm not gonna have some boy with two years' service under his belt slagging him off, all right? Calm down. I never meant anything by it. No? Well, if you didn't mean anything by it, you should shut your gob. Come on, Sarge. Can I have your attention? We've drawn up a schedule for interviews. You're free to go about your normal duties as far as possible, but please make sure you're available for the times requested. Claire. I've got to have a word. I don't want to talk about it. A minute of your time. 
I know that you and John wanted it kept under wraps. Well, it's your decision, and uh, I respect that, and it's safe with me. I don't want to talk about it. I know, I know, babe. Look, all I'm saying is that um, me and John, we were like that. Two peas in a pod. We know each other's business and we looked after each other's backs. These other donuts, <laughs> they haven't got a clue as far as being a detective's concerned. But John, he was different. I had great respect for him, you know that. It was more than that, though, Claire. He was like a brother. So I do know what you're going through. Listen. see John at all, like yesterday evening, I mean, between you and me? No, I didn't. I didn't see him after work. Did you? No, no, no. I was with Maggie all night. Claire, I swear to you, there's nothing, absolutely nothing I won't do to make sure that whoever was responsible for this goes down. Looks like I'm opening the batting. Take care, Claire. You still here? Yeah, I'm it. They want to talk to me. Oh, right. Um, I'm starting a collection. Yeah, yeah, sure. There you go. Cheers, Dave. It's very generous. Not really. Not 50 quid. It's guilt, actually. I never liked him. I only wish I could be more help. Um, but as you can see from the records, uh, I wasn't the main man in the Rachel Booker inquiry. I was just helping out from time to time, man. It really didn't need three sergeants. Did you know D.S. Bolton well? Yes. Very well. He was a very close friend, not just a colleague. What can you tell us about his personal life? Well, how do you mean? Well, it's a bit of a blank in the records. He was unmarried, lived alone, next of kin, mother and father. Yes, but... If John was killed because of the Booker case, why would that matter? I don't know whether it matters or not. This is a murder inquiry. I have to assume nothing, trust no one and check everything, you know that? Yeah. So, what can you tell us about John Bolton's private life? He must have had some emotional relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Women? <laughs> well, definitely. I mean, if you are implying that John was in that cement works cruising for a bruising, then you are up the wrong tree. I don't think this is an occasion for cheap frivolity, Sergeant. No, ma'am. I'm sorry. So, who did your friend John have relationships with, currently or recently? You were his friend. You must be able to name his girlfriends. You're putting me in a very difficult position here, ma'am. Are you obstructing this inquiry? No. No, I'm not. Uh, there was a relationship which both parties wished to remain secret. What, a married woman? No. It was another colleague here at Sunhill. Go on. Claire 
gestern. Claire. You know? You know what's happened? I know about John Bolton, yes. What happened to you? Last night, Beach calls John, asking for a meeting, right? This morning, Beach says he has no contact with John after work. What does that tell you? We didn't anticipate this, Claire. Believe me, Beach will do anything. He will do anything to protect himself. We've got to, we've got to stop him. We will. How do you know Beach contacted Bolton? Because I was with him. And I was with him because we were lovers. <laughs> You know we've got loads to do. You lying bastard. Do oh, Maggie, I got in a fight with a bloke. Help me. Yeah, well, that's exactly what happened. It was on the news, Don. It was John. John Bolton. And they're saying it was murder. It wasn't murder. It was not murder, Maggie. It was an accident. I don't believe this. Yeah, well, that's why I couldn't tell you last night. I mean, I didn't believe it myself. Look, Maggie, if you turn on me, then I've got nothing. I'm dead. If they stick this on me, I'll just top myself. I'm sorry, Claire, I probably should have pulled you out. You know, no way, I'm not laying this off. It's not too late, I can still pull you out. We'll dream up a story. No, no, I'm going to see it through. I've got a meeting with Amit later on. I'm going to tell him that I was with John and he went to go meet Beach. I have to ask you not to do that, Claire. What? This is murder. You want me to withhold information so you can finish off your piss-pot corruption case? I can't believe I'm hearing this. Claire. I asked you to pull Beach and you didn't and now John is dead and you still want to play cloak Claire, and dagger shut case. up and think this through. You tell Amip that Bolton intended to meet Beach, then what happens? Well, they nick him, which is more than you seem prepared to do. They can't nick do. him on your say-so. They'll interview him. You think he'll put his hands up? Don Beach. Well, they can get forensics. Who said that Beach went anywhere near Bolton? He probably set up the meeting, got himself a cast iron alibi and contracted the job to someone else. Now, if that's the case, all your AMIP interview does is warn him. And if I know anything about Don Beach, he'll be gone quicker than Billy Wiz. So what are you saying? I'm saying you act against all your instincts. I'm saying you keep the cool nerve and the clear head that's got us so far, so very far, Claire. And you let this operation run. And when we go for Don Beach, and I promise you we will, we do so with enough evidence to annihilate him. He was my best friend, Maggie. So how did it happen? John was getting a bit close to some business of mine, and... I tried to warn him off, maybe, for his own sake. I was actually trying to save his life, but he wouldn't listen. He, he walked away and I tried to stop him. One thing led to another, a bit of pushing and shoving, and then we were fighting. He, he had his hands around my neck, he was strangling me. I was dying, maybe. It was either him or me. Well, what the hell are you going to do now? Well, I thought I'd see if they had any usable forensic evidence, and if not, I'll try and tough it out. Um, try and muddy the waters a bit, you know? And if there is forensic stuff? Then I'm out of here, kid. Another country, another ID. It's the only chance I've got. Well, can you settle that up? Well, Howard Fallon knows me for all this grief. He can set it up. One of your employees was killed. Another, a potential witness, was threatened, Mr Fallon. 
D.S. Bolton was involved in an investigation into these matters. What can you tell us about the circumstances of his death? I regret to say that I can't help you. And I'd like to point out that although I'm being interviewed under caution, I'm not under arrest. And I'm cooperating voluntarily in this investigation. Yes, that is already on record, Mr. Fallon. Can you tell us about your whereabouts yesterday evening and night? I most certainly can. And I can provide you with witnesses who can give me an alibi. That's very considerate of you. I was shocked and horrified to hear of Sergeant Bolton's death. And I'd like to assure you that my hands are clean in this matter. His mobile switched off. Are you sure you can trust him? No, but then I haven't got a massive range of options, have I? Interview terminated at 13.50. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't help you. There it is. Never mind, Mr Fallon. I'm sure you'll have opportunities to help us in the course of this investigation. I'd have thought this would have been an end to it. I wouldn't count on that if I were you. I've only ever wanted amicable relations with the police. But uh, put yourself in my position. My business interests are bound to suffer. I'd be sorry if anyone's legitimate business was damaged by our investigation, Mr Fallon. But uh, I don't have to tell you that in the case of a murdered police officer, we are tenacious, to say the least. Naturally. So until we get a satisfactory conclusion to this case, I can't promise you that you won't be troubled any further. In fact, I'd rather doubt it. But if you were to lay your hands on a person responsible, we could all go back to our lawful pursuits in peace. If you found you had something to say to me, Mr Fallon, it would not be disregarded. Can we leave it at that? You are a hard man to track down, Howard. Don, you been uh, trying to call me then? Yeah, I have. Well, it's a good job I didn't have my uh, mobile on. I've been talking to Paula Ray. That would have looked good, wouldn't it? Oh, hello, Don. I can't talk now. I'm in the nick. <laughs> so what happened? Well, I didn't know anything, did I? Oh, come on, Don. You and me were like that. Yeah. Me and John Bolton were like that, Howard. But we are a firm, Don. That's the difference. So, what can I do for you? Apparently, they've got forensics off the body. They can do a three-card trick with that stuff these days. I can't take the chance, Howard. Um, looks like I'm going to have to bite the bullet and run. What's your call, Don? I can have you out of the country today. Tickets, passport. Maggie's coming with me. Whatever you say, Don. And I'll tell you when and where when I've got it set up. What was your relationship with John Bolton? Colleagues. No more than that? No. When did you last see him? Um, about 5.30 yesterday afternoon, when we were clocking off. Did he tell you anything about his plans for that evening? No. Oh, he might be meeting, anything like that? No. Really, Claire? No, why should he? Well, because it would be quite natural, wouldn't it? You had a relationship. You were lovers, weren't you? Station gossip. You know, if the female officers had the love lives attributed to them in the locker room, then uh, we'd all be in the Guinness Book of Records, wouldn't we, Mum? All right, Mick. Yeah. Sorry about earlier when I know I was out of order. Don't worry about it, forget it. We were both out of order, and uh, I should know better, shouldn't I? Everybody's wound up, Mick. We all want to see a result. So, uh, how's it going? I uh, heard they had Howard Fallon in. Yeah. Wasted time, I bet. You know, the only way to get anything out of a professional like Fallon is take him for a long ride and give him the old trip through. Yeah, those are the days, Sarge. Yeah, but I bet Mom hasn't got anything like that in her repertoire, has she? I don't know what's going on. How do you mean? What, did Fallon come across with anything? No, I bet he was just... I don't know, he was... What? 
when the tape was off, I just simply be playing footsie a bit. Verbally, I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean, Mick, but like what? Well, nothing you can put your finger on. Okay. Fallon was just sort of saying, you know, he was just sort of saying, would I get less ass if I gave a name? And she wasn't exactly playing him out. Then what? Then nothing. It was just kind of like, my door's always open, sort of thing. We've got a lot of material from John Bolton's body. If I were to ask for samples from his colleagues and match them up, what do you think I'd find? You'd find me all over him. Intimate samples? Yes, ma'am, we sampled each other intimately. Are you satisfied now? Then why lie about it? Because we had to... We had to keep it secret. We had to... We, we knew what would happen if people found out here, you know, but they, they'd be doing what you're... You're making a meal out of it. That's what everyone would do. I am investigating your lover's death, Claire. Surely you want to help. Of course I do. So I'll ask again. When did you last see him? Last night, late in the evening, I was at his flat. And where did he go from there? He got a call and he went to meet someone. Who? He didn't tell me. Claire. He's a good... He's a good police officer. He didn't tell people things they didn't need to know. So this was police business? I assume so. Well, if he was such a good police officer, Claire, why did he go alone? Oh, I don't know. I think you could tell me more, Claire. I wish I could. I desperately wish I could. Hello? Yeah. Howard Fallon. T.S. Ferris? Yeah, I'll tell her to get right back to you. Hang about, she's just walked in. Howard Fallon for you, boss. Says he wants to meet urgently on the QT. Cheers. Paula Ray? Get a move on. Well, what's the rush about? We've got two hours. I want to be there well early. And Mick want to speak to Don again. I told him he's out on inquiries, but as usual, I haven't a clue where he is. Do you know? Sorry. Well, it doesn't sound anything big, but let him know when he comes in, right? Sir. You all right? Yeah, fine. No, you're not. Well, you know, it takes a while to sink in, doesn't it? Someone you work with every day. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to everyone. Don's well cut up. We're an hour early. Don't talk. Just listen and do what I tell you, right? Don't talk to me like that. Oh, I'm sorry, maybe, but this is really serious, OK? Slow, slow. Maggie, there may be police camcorders focused on this vehicle right now. Okay. So please act like you're alone in this vehicle, all right? Otherwise, I'll end up on Rule 43 doing 30 years with a load of nonsense. Don't pull in. Keep going. Well, what have you seen? I met with a Nondi. You speak English. A nondescript vehicle. They're setting up an ambush. And they must think I'm an amateur. How do you mean? Well, it's obvious, Maggie. Fallon's grossed me up. Sarge, uh, a few of us are going for a drink just to uh, get it off our chest, like. Just wondering if you want to come. Oh, um, thanks, but I, I think I'll go home. Night. No, sir. Night, Sarge. Night, Sarge. 
Jesus. Should be having a quiet night in. Tasty programme on BBC Two about archaeology, I expect. It affects people in different ways, Mickey. And she's OK at a sergeant's school. I wouldn't climb over and get a Jeff Daly, if that's what you mean. <laughs> I mean, there's a person. How would you know? How would any of us know? Hello, Claire. You can cut out the pantomime now, all right? I don't know what you're talking about. Bathroom clear. Bedroom clear. Kitchen clear. So now what? Let's turn this place over. And if that doesn't put us up behind Beach? Stanton. You know, John had his doubts about you. He met a bloke who remembered you as a really high flyer. Staff officer material, he said. John wondered how you'd ended up at Sunhill CID as a sergeant. Don't you dare tell me what John thought of me. Don't you dare. I know what John thought of me. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Claire. You'll never understand how sorry I am. I know that John went to meet you last night. talk about John's death, Claire. Oh, go on. But who would I be talking to? What do you mean? Well, if you are fronting a CIB operation, then take me to your governor. I'll spill my guts to him. Tell you stuff that you never even suspected. I don't understand. All you have to understand is that if you are CIB, you and I walk out of here together, all right? If you're just John's woman, who got a bit nosy, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with you, Claire.
Looks like there's no one home. When do we tell Sun Hill about all this? Not until we've pulled Beach. He's got too many mates there. Are you serious? You better believe it, Claire. Too. Yeah, it's always been that way. Yeah, I know that. I'm just saying. Well, he didn't have a wife and kids, or a steady screw, as far as I know. Always his folks. But he never mentioned them either. I don't know how close he was. We always have a collection, OK? Team spirit. Absolutely. Well, if he doesn't have any relatives, we'll just send the money to uh, a good cause that John was into. <laughs> You lot are really sick. Detective Superintendent Hodges, CIB3, Don Beach. I've been aware someone was breathing down my neck. They nice to finally find out who. Sit down. I don't know what Claire's told you. Well, there wasn't much he hadn't guessed, sir. So. So, how do you see this meeting progressing, Don? I've, um, made a career out of corruption in the police force, and, uh, I've also been responsible for the death of a fellow officer and very close friend. I've run out of road, Mr Hodges. I'm putting my hands up, but I want to come in from the cold. Well, that's excellent. Hallelujah! Don Beach has seen the light. And now he wants to get it all off his chest. Of course, you'll understand that I'll want to continue this conversation as a taped interview, under caution. We can save all the formal stuff to later, can't we? I mean, just listen to what I've got to say, please. Can we talk about the death of John Bolton? Seems a good enough place to start. All right. Howard Fallon, with whom I have a corrupt relationship, was threatening to have John Bolton whacked. I called John to a clandestine meeting to uh, try and warn him off, buy him off. <laughs> I thought he'd be up for it. I mean, we've pulled a few strokes in the past, and I know he's no boy Hang scout. on, hang on. John is... His way. Go on, Don. I got it seriously wrong. John reacted very badly. I tried to walk away. I restrained him. One thing led to another and we fought. John was capable of uh, extreme violence, as his complaints record will show. So no, 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 this is... I'm not sure it's appropriate for you to be present at this meeting, Claire, owing to your personal involvement. However, if you do stay, you'll have to conduct yourself in a professional manner. Is that understood? You and Bolton fought? Yeah, we fought. He had his uh, hands around my throat. There are scratches on my throat here. I was in fear of my life. Uh, I was choking. I banged his head on the ground. Once, twice, how many times? I don't know, I can't remember. You're putting your hands up to the killing of John Bolton. You murdered him. No, Claire. Not murder. Manslaughter. <laughs> Never know Don Beach messing booze up. Maybe he's too gutted. Can I get the same again? There's nothing left in the pot. <laughs> The kitty's run out. I have more money. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's for a good cause, isn't it? 
It's what John would have wanted. Large scotch, please. And a pint of lager. Oh, lager. Oh, lager. Oh, lager. Oh, lager. Oh, lager. You killed a police officer. You're going to have a hard time calling that manslaughter. No. For a start, it wasn't in the course of his duty. Arguable. Yeah. Well, if I'm gripping the rail at the old Bailey chum, then I'm going to have counsel that could argue black is white, right? And settle for grey. I think you're kidding yourself, Don. There was no intention on my part to kill John Bolton. I wasn't carrying a weapon. The killing took place in the course of an attempted criminal act, conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. I didn't do it because I couldn't bend John Clare. I did it because he was throttling me. CPS will run with the murder charge. It'll be up to a jury to knock it down to manslaughter if you can convince them. Yeah, well, that's what I thought Amit would be looking for. That's why I came to Wait you. Wait a minute. What do you mean? You charge me with manslaughter and I stand out for it, no bother. And why would I do that? For all the stuff I can give you about corruption. I didn't bring him here to do deals. Don, if I can nail you for murder, I'm not going to plea bargain for tales of your corruption. Damn right he's not. Not just my corruption, Mr Hodges. Now we're getting there. Here's the idea. I cough for manslaughter, but you keep it quiet for the moment. And as far as the rest of the world's concerned, I carry on as usual in CID at Sunhill. Cannot be done. You are grasping at straws, Let's hear what Don. he has to say. You run me against Fallon and I give him to you. Plus you get Bazzini, the whole drug scam, the money laundering and the killing of Rachel Booker. Nice idea, Don, but Bazzini and Fallon are not my targets. Sure. But you also get the rest of their playmates in the police force. For instance? You're not listening to this crap. For instance, and this is just for openers, how about two officers on the area drug squad? Keep talking. I can deliver them in the act. CIB3, <laughs> the ghost squad. You spent millions of pounds trying to plot up on bent coppers and what have you got to show for it, eh? Hmm? Nothing. How many convictions? It's been a blowout, hasn't it? You need what everybody else needs in detective work and that's a wicked bastard on the inside willing to grass up his associates. Well. I'm your man. This is bollocks. There is no deal possible. I'm up right behind you. You know that, no, Don. They, they can be put off. I can't call them off to protect a supergrass. Exactly. It'll have to be bumped up through my governors to assistant commissioner level. You can't do that. I think you better leave us now, Claire. A man has been killed. I know it may not have sounded like it, but that was an order. what John would have wanted. They've asked if they could meet a few of his close friends. So I put forward your name. Me? You mean we have a future? Together, I mean. I'd like to think so. But it's going to need careful planning. Without me, you get zilch. You haven't got a prayer. Detective Chief Inspector, that would be a prize. The guy is a poker player. This is just another bluff. I'll clean up your little mess here, and in return you set me up as your rep in the land of the free. Or did you forget? 